Today I will show you some uh, typical Western tensor framing plans in Hong Kong. A major. Okay. Uh, before we start, it, we need to understand some of the basic principle of the framing plans. Some of the elements, such as structural levels, where is the cantilever portion, and what is the size of the slab, beam, columns, and wall. Where is the transfer structures? And sometimes we use picasso elements. And sometimes you also need to understand where is the level difference of the framing pans. I just show you some of the typical framing pans in Hong Kong. Normally, in Hong Kong nowadays, if you have enough money, you can buy two flats together. That's why nowadays the internal wall will not be a structural element. Nowadays, because if you have money, you can buy two flats together, and then you can demolish this non-structural wall and make your flats become bigger. And then, this is another types of residential buildings. This is a subdivided flat. The flat become very small, and also the architect will think about sometimes if they have enough money or they can buy one more flat. That's why you can see the this internal wall sometimes. Uh, some portion is a non structural element. They can make an opening after the buying the fast by submitting plans to government departments for approval. And then you can see another types of uh, residential fast. Normally, nowadays, you can see the balcony is a very typical one. And then you can see also the size of the fast become very small to suit the Hong Kong citizens. This is another type of samples for your reference. Okay, I will show you how to do the framing plans if you receive some of the architectural plans like this. First of all, you need to assign the vertical elements, such as assign the vertical elements in lips, staircase, and internal wall first, and then assign the horizontal elements, such as main beams, and then secondary beams and the slab. Before that, you need to remember. Normally, in Hong Kong, all the residential building is made by reinforced concrete building. That's why the column and center to center is up one ten meter. It means around ten meters, you need to assign a columns or a structural wall. Okay, and then another element is you need to understand. Normally, the beams can only span up to ten meters. Okay, for the slab. 2.5 meter is an optimum optimum design and very uh, economic. That's why you need to remember this basic uh, principle before we start it. Okay, the first one I will show you how to do the uh, residential framing pans, structural framing pans. Before that, you need to understand the the span between uh, each face. Okay, that's why before we start it, you need to measure the distance between the face. Okay, that's why. Follow the step one, assign the vertical elements, and then most likely you need to understand sometimes the architect don't like the wall is obstructed by the external view. For example, if you see the C view, you normally cannot assign the wall near the windows, okay? That's why uh, also you need to understand the size of the rooms. If you assign many structural walls in one room, the size will be very small, okay? That's why the first step. Normally, you need to assign structural elements, structural walls near the core wall, near the staircase, and near the uh, inside the uh, staircase. Okay, this is uh, most likely the structural element we need to start it. And then after that, we need to assign the structural wall between two faces. Normally, for example, this is a uh, follow the ten meters column to column dimension. For example, this is around seven point five meter. You assign the first more first and then after that around 10 meter you assign another column and other another 10 meter you assign structural wall and another within 10 meter you assign another wall in here and then you can make the social framings after that you also need to do it the same theory by horizontally but look at the right hand side normally this is uh, only 4.5 meters that's why the dimension is very small, the size of the face is very small. We try to assign a little column is good enough to support the, this portion. That's why you can see the framing pan is only have four small columns in here to support the cantilever portion. 
in the edge of the building and then after that we assign the main beam and we can make a very economic main pan okay after that you can see another example this is after you provide the core wall and then you just connect the core wall together and make the main beam okay this is a so called the horizontal elements to make the structural frame become more strong and good enough to resist the wind no okay and after that after you do the x direction you also do the y direction just connect two walls together and make the strong framing pants okay i will show you some typical uh, details of the uh, wood feature or uh, the ac platform okay nowadays you can see many residential buildings have a uh, ac platform normally they will have a louver to cover up to make the building much more beautiful okay you can see another platform remember normally the ac platform will not be rest on the uh, uh, floor because sometimes we need to allow space for maintenance okay and then this is another type of very typical uh, balcony remember normally in hong kong we allow 150 mm level different in order to not allow any rain water flushing inside of the building in case of raining okay this is very important otherwise your fat will be get wet during raining season okay and then this is another uh, structural picas element normally this is for economic environmental design and this is uh, just fixed it directly to the beams and to provide the external facade and after you can see many cases of water leakage nowadays we also provide a sunken slab for the bathroom the sunken slab can detect the water leakage and then you can easily find out where is the water leakage not to affect the nearby uh, labor okay okay this is the end of my presentation thank you